What is going on crew and welcome to another edition of Early Signals. Today is Friday, June 16th and we're going to review six really cool ideas that I found throughout the week here. Now, first thing that I want to say is thank you very much for everybody who's reached out to me and told me about the projects that they've built with these tutorials. It's been cool. They've sent YouTube videos and emails and tweets and all this other stuff and really I just think it's super cool that y'all are taking action and nothing gets me jazzed up as much as builders building and people doing cool stuff. So thank you very much for sharing. The other thing I wanted to share too is thank you to everybody who responds to the little welcome email that I give. So they say, yes, Greg, I got your welcome email, awesome. And then I give them a little survey. And so I say, what made you sign up? And I give them some options and people respond back with one, which is the option that they sign for. Most of the people say that they're looking for new ideas to build. Now this is an inspirational series, so this makes sense to me. There's a lot of really cool ideas we find and I put them together and hand them over to you so you can go and figure out something to build. Either way, let's jump into this week and and let's see what the cool ideas that we have are. As always, the ideas that we review in this video is just a subsection of a full Notion doc that we have. If you don't know it, it's the AI Early Signals doc, and down below here, I have a big long list of ideas. These are the ones we're gonna review today, but really, we have a whole bunch. I don't wanna spoil the surprise. Let's jump into the hottest six ideas that I was a big fan of this week. Our, our first idea is coming from our friend Cortland Allen, who runs Indie Hackers. I've hired a few GPT bots, hired in quotes, because of course he's probably made it himself, to help out behind the scenes on Indie Hackers now. The latest, Anderson Coopbot. Okay, kind of clever. He's an editor and journalist who helps us evaluate user submissions for articles whenever they come in. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So what he's doing here is he's having Anderson Coopbot look at user generated content and do some sort of moderation and or some suggestions on how to make that content a little bit better. Let's see what else he says here. Um, I have a battery of tests I use to improve the bot, evaluate some posts and give them scores, tweak the bot's prompt, cool, makes sense. But this is the part that really inspired me. This is the most fun I've had building stuff in years, to be honest. I'm coding employees out of thin air, giving them training, and then setting them loose. They're con absurdly consistent, reliable, cheap, and never quit. They work 24-7. The part that's really cool about this is he's using this for the internal use case. And this is really my hypothesis on early signals in general. If you see somebody doing something like this, this is like they're using an Excel spreadsheet, but for their own internal purposes. This is a prime use case to build a product out of. And all it is gonna take is an indie developer or somebody from a, a larger organization to go and code this up, productionalize it, and you can go ahead and offer this to other people because how many folks out there cannot code for themselves like Cortland can do? Hmm, well, I bet there's gonna be a whole ton and I bet that they would be happy to throw some cash at you in exchange for the value that you'd be providing for them. All right, let's take a look at a second example here. This is actually the same idea, but I wanted to highlight it because I saw it. It became a lot more possible this year to start doing AI content moderation. So this is along the same lines where users are generating content and you have an AI who's doing content moderation on here. All right, let's look at the second idea. So this is an idea that I actually put together and I did another tutorial on if you wanna go see it, but that tutorial is around just a streamlit app and it is not productionalized and I'm not monetizing it in any way. I'm interviewing somebody soon and I wanted to speed boost research uh, prep. Using GPT-4, I looked at their recent tweets and did interview questions. And so what I did was is I popped in a person, let's use this case, I use McKay, uh, and it looked at the person's recent tweets and so I could generate interview questions. Can you tell us more about your Langchain 101 course and how it benefited be beginners interested in AI? Okay, so that's interesting. Now, what's cool about this is for the uh, production app I did on Streamlit, not only was it interview questions, but it was also a one page summary. Now, research and fact finding is a major piece of the sales motion of people getting ready to interview other people. And so if you can build a product around researching others and providing a concise summary on that person, specialized towards the user's use case, I think you're gonna find good success here. All right, let's take a look at the next idea. Uh, community notes should use barred API to create a service where someone can just tag at community notes to fact check a video or tweet. Now, the reason why I thought this one was really, really interesting was because if you can do AI fact checking, then you're going to have a pretty cool product on your hands. Now, of course, hallucinations are going to be a little bit of an issue. If you could do this at scale, I think that you could have a really, really awesome unopinionated, meaning you're going to play both sides of an argument, uh, go and gather information, go and gather facts and see if something actually is true. So the one that they're looking up here, it happens to be uh, that Tucker, Tucker Carlson uh, tweet that he put out. Can someone take the transcript here, add citations, fact check it and post to Twitter as a, as a reply? Do this as an automated with an agent. I think you're going to have a really cool product on your hands. All right, stick look at the next one here. 
In by design, uh, the extent of my use of GPT-4 subscription so far has been to get AI to make up original bedtime stories to my five-year-old daughter's prompts. So what we have on our hands here is a storyteller that's specific towards uh, children's bedtime stories. And I think you could make, well, one, you could make infinite amount of stories here, but two, I think you could have a really powerful tool where you can have interactivity with a child making a bedtime story and have the parent in the loop there that's gonna be telling it to their son or daughter. Now, in order to monetize this one, you could use previous stories that others have generated. You could even kick back revenue over to the content creator in the first place. So then all of a sudden you have a little bit of a marketplace where you're buying and selling these stories. Cool. Let's check out the next one. Now this one's from our friend Travis. He actually has a very successful tool out there. And I think someone doing this for their own use case or for a niche that they ha isn't covered here would be really, really cool. My chat GPT bot just passed 80,000 followers. That's pretty cool. And this is really, really impressive that it has 80,000 followers on here. It recently went viral in China with a very specific use case, hallucinated bios. I saw this and I was like, what are you talking about? So Chinese users started asking ChatGPT bot in mass to describe the Twitter user with a specific username. But here's the interesting part is that the bot doesn't have any additional context about the user, but yet it was forced to write horoscope like bios that drove crazy engagement. So all of a sudden these folks are saying like, hey, here's my Twitter handle give me my horoscope or bot about it just based off the Twitter handle. And there was some really cool content that was generated by the AI there. So I think if you generated this for your specific use case, maybe it's bull riders, maybe it's NASCAR drivers, maybe it's, you know, who knows, maybe it's doctors, maybe it's dentists, or maybe a horoscope, maybe a future prediction, whatever it may be, I think you're going to get some good engagement here. For the last idea I spotted today, it's less of one specific idea, and it's more just a genre of cool things happening. So there is a subreddit called Chat GPT Gaming. Now, you may be wondering, well, what's that all about? Well, what these folks have been doing is they've been making games within the chat GPT world. So if you click on this Supreme Court decision game, you go and click on this, where it takes you is it takes you to a template that has already been created by another user and it sets up the rules for the games and then it sets up the AI. So all of a sudden you're going to be playing in a game that's just based off of chat GPT template. This is pretty cool because you can create all sorts of games, any number of games, really an infinite amount, but you can also share these games to other people. So that would be pretty cool to have a website that had all these different games on them and then created an optimized experience, you know, like session management or remember the history or your favorite games or maybe leveling or something like that. But either way, here's a bunch of really cool games that I think that you could productize and, um, have some fun with and definitely do some monetization on top of it. All right, crew, that is the early signals edition for this week. Again, if you want to get the full Notion doc, you can head over to the link in the description and sign up for it. I'll send you all these ideas. I think there's something like 80 or 90 uh, ideas that are held on there for now. All right, crew, we'll see you later.